Hi, in this video we are going to talk about the basics of irreversible reactions in parallel and how to describe their kinetics. Let us consider a simple case of parallel reactions. Uh, so let's assume that A is uh, being reacted in two paths, A gives R and A gives S. Okay. We can write this in another form like A gives R, the rate constant is K1 and A gives S, the rate constant is K2. Okay. These are uh, two competitive pathways through which A reacts and uh, this here or uh, in parallel reactions individually they lead to multiple elementary reactions. Okay. So, uh, it is important uh, to note some general rules when we are talking about the kinetics of parallel reactions. Uh, first thing it is important that you write the stoichiometric equations of all the reactions that are taking place. Like here we have two competitive uh, reactions. So, I have written the uh, stoichiometric expression for both of them. Okay, And then we will carry on our further analysis. Before going to the other things that we must keep in mind, I will write the rate equation for each of these components. Okay, So, let me write the rate equations with respect to A, R and S. Okay. So, first with respect to A minus R A equals to minus D C A D T equals to K 1 C A plus K 2 C A. Okay. So, A is getting consumed in both the reactions. With respect to R, R R equals to D C R D T. So, R is getting produced that is why there is no negative sign that is K 1 into C A. Well and good. Let us see for S, R S equals to D C S by D T. This again is getting produced. So, it is K 2 into C A. So, these are the rate equations. Now, uh, to analyze the kinetics and find out the K 1 and K 2 values uh, given that we have experimental data at hand. It is now necessary to follow the reactions for all the components to describe the whole kinetics. What I mean to say is if you just consider this expression or this expression or this expression, you will not get the values of both K1 and K2. Okay. You need at least two of these react uh, two of these equations to determine values of both K1 and K2. Okay. So at least two components uh, rate equations must be followed in this particular case. Right. Another thing to keep in mind that is as per the stoichiometric information CA plus CR plus CS will always remain constant. Okay. So, initially uh, the condition of this reaction is such that we have only CA0 and CR0 and CS0 uh, do not exist. So, those values are 0. Therefore, CA plus CR plus CS at initial time is equals to CA0. Now, whatever that amount is throughout the uh, you know span of reaction that value remains constant. The sum of all the components concentration remains constant. Okay. I have given just one case over here where uh, initially whole of A is present and none of R or S are present. But 
it can be that some amount of products are already present in the system that is also possible but whatever be the case the total amount of uh, component concentration remains constant throughout the reaction time now uh, let us carry on forward so we said we require at least two of these uh, expressions to definitely get the values of k1 and k2 now how do we do that so we are going to use all of these three uh, equations basically first of all uh, using the first expression okay let me call this equation 1 this as equation 2 and this as equation 3 okay so if you uh, in, obtain the integrated form of equation 1 then you will get integrated form of equation 1 you will get minus ln C A by C A naught equals to K1 plus K2 into T. You can do this calculation on your own. I am just writing the final integrated form. Now, if you plot uh, this equation uh, like T on the x axis and ln of C A by C A naught, okay, you can just uh, directly plot minus ln of uh, C A by C A naught, then you will obtain a straight line whose slope is K1 plus K2, okay. So, from here you have the sum of K1 plus K2 value, but definitively what is K1 and what is K2 you still cannot say. That is why we need the other two equations. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to divide 2 by 3, okay. So, equation 2 by equation 3 that is RR by RS. This will give us DCR by DCS because DT, DT will cancel out that is K1 by CA by k2 c uh, oh, sorry i said it mistakenly k1 ca by k2 ca that is equals to k1 by k2 okay now if you just uh, integrate this uh, then you will obtain integrated form as cr minus cr0 divided by C S minus C S 0 equals to K 1 by K 2. If C R 0 and C S 0 are 0, then C R by C S equals to K 1 by K 2. But this is the general expression. Okay. Now, uh, simply if you uh, plot C S on the x axis and C R on the y axis, then you will get a plot like this where the slope is k1 by k2 and this starting point over here, this is C S 0 when extended to the x axis and C R 0 when extended on the y axis okay so you will get this kind of plot now you see if you correlate both of these plots you can actually find the value of k1 and k2 definitively okay so just considering either one of these uh, components is not going to help you have to take care of all of the uh, stoichiometric equations and their corresponding rate equations to uh, specifically obtain the information about the kinetics okay now uh, let's say uh, for a batch reactor if we want to visualize how the uh, typical uh, you know concentration versus time curve will look like 
so on the x axis we have the concentration term t and on y axis uh, sorry on x axis we have time and concentration term on the y axis then c a 0 let it start from a higher value it is slowly getting decomposed and if we assume that there is no presence of r and s at the initial state then c r is also forming and c s is also going up so these are c r c s and this is c a right so this kind of plot you would accept, expect when c r 0 equals to 0 c s 0 equals to 0 and k 1 is greater than k 2 ok this is the basic understanding about the uh, you know parallel reactions there can be uh, you know more advanced uh, understanding regarding this taking up more you know uh, sub cases of uh, parallel reactions but overall for a basic understanding uh, this is sufficient okay like how you can get the kinetics of the parallel reactions first thing is you need to note down all the individual stoichiometric equations and then their corresponding rate equations using all of these rate equations for all the components you can uh, obtain the kinetic expressions or kinetic rate constant values with some accuracy okay that is it thank you